Hello, everyone. My name is Ana Lucia Hernandez, and I'm presenting emotion perception and gender identity. So there are many different things that can affect the way that you perceive emotions as a human being. And one of those things is said to be sex assigned at birth. So there's been a lot of studies considering are females better at identifying emotions are males, but many of these studies are inconclusive. However, recent literature suggests that females are better at identifying subtle emotions. Well, both females and males are able to identify more amplified emotions at about the same rate. However, what many of these studies lack is gender diversity. So many of these focus solely on the binary of male or female and don't regard any of the in-betweens, anyone outside the binary who doesn't resonate with the sex they have assigned at birth. And so I want to know, are emotions perceived differently between cisgender individuals and individuals who don't identify with the sex assigned at birth? And if so, which emotions are perceived differently? So for our methodology, we had three whole participants. <laughs> so we had one cisgender male, one cisgender female, and one transgender non-binary individual. So our participants were selected from a wider participant pool from a previous study um, using a random name generator to keep everything fair and random. And we are following the procedures from a previous study where recorded videos of individuals demonstrating the seven universal emotions were all viewed and labeled by our participants. There are 208 of these videos. And it's also important to um, explain that our labels were not categorized as correct or incorrect. Rather, we're classifying agreement of labels, and that is what we're recording to avoid falling into any biases. So as you can see here at the bottom, we have some graphs and charts. And our bar graph over here in green shows our total agreement across participants. So the first bar that shows complete agreement is three out of three of our participants. And there were 123 instances of complete agreements for all our participants in their labels. Next, the next bar is 75% agreement where two out of three of our participants agreed. And there are 78 instances where two participants agreed. And next, there were only seven instances where none of our participants agreed on what label for the video. And as you can see, there are two pie charts at the bottom of this poster. And the one that is labeled 100% shows from the complete agreement which emotions are being agreed upon more often. So you can see here the orange, yellow, and the pink, those stand for the neutral, happy, and surprise. And those are our top three emotions that are labeled with the most agreement. And as you can see, our lowest emotions are anger in red, fear in purple, and sadness in blue. And it changes a bit when you go into the 75% agreement graph. There's still steady neutral. There's a little bit less happiness. And you can see that there is a big jump for sadness and disgust. Our next graph on the right shows the agreement across all our participants. And it just shows their perspective. So on the top, we have angry. And to the right, we have neutral, happy, disgust, sad, fear, surprise. And as you can see, everyone kind of has a similar perspective in this. Um, we're labeling with a lot of agreement for neutral happiness and surprise. However, um, our non-binary transgender individual in yellow does have some differences between our cisgender individuals, our cisgender female who is the pink line and our cisgender male who is the blue line tend to agree with each other a little bit more than they agree with our non-binary individual. So this is very interesting. And while most, it's important to focus on the similarities that everyone has, 
because we are using a gender inclusive approach to our research. But it's also interesting to note that there are some subtle differences. And this gives us some more research questions to investigate in the future. So I'd like to talk about um, how these findings are also similar to a previous study that I conducted, where I compared just males and females who and their sex assigned at birth and compared how they identified emotions, what their perspectives were. And the results were very similar to what we have in these graphs in this study. The top three were happiness, neutral, and surprise. And the bottom three consistently are anger and fear, which is very interesting to me. And like I said, we are using a gender inclusive approach to account for the subjective nature of emotions and to avoid using cisgender individuals as the normative or gold standard, because this can propagate some um, unhealthy biases in research. So that being said, in the future, we'd like to recruit more diverse labelers and more labelers in general. <laughs> so this includes um, more people with different gender identities, more people with different ethnicities and races, et cetera. And we'd also like to refine our data collection process to include a more authentic emotion portrayal that translates better into a real world setting. Now, these videos, when they were recorded, they were recorded through Zoom because that was during COVID times. So now that we can begin recording in person again. I'd like to see how that impacts our labels in the future. And then it's also important to note that I would love to follow a community-based participatory research paradigm, which means that I'd love to have a transgender researcher involved with this whole study to keep everyone accountable and to um, keep everything fair and non-biased. So yes, this has been my research presentation on emotion perception and gender identity. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation and for viewing my poster and have a great day. <laughs>